All right. Y'all all got your, hold on. Y'all all got your jerseys on? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have my jersey on. Superman changing. Yes, I do. Oh, favorites is down there at the bottom. Of the <laughs> What's up, guys? Yeah. Welcome to the very first episode of the SMC podcast. We're going to call this the FLW pre-party. We're doing a little podcast at every one of the tournaments this year, and this is the very first one, and I've got star a little group here. We're going to hang out with you guys for like an hour. We're going to talk about the tournament. We're going to talk about industry stuff. We're going to talk about what's going on, and we're going to talk about some crazy fish catches. So you don't want to get off this. There's going to be some good stuff in this podcast. But first, let me introduce everybody. We've got Billy's Got a Bass. We've got Tom Reddington right here. He's been on tour with us for, for a lot of years. We've got B-Lat hanging out with us now. Andrew Upshaw hanging out with us this year. David Dudley, the man, the myth, the legend. Guys, awesome to join us here. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little podcast action. You know, I think it's um, We've it's never really done good. a podcast. No, we haven't. We haven't done a podcast. But I've been wanting to do one. Yeah. Everybody's doing them lately. Yeah, I know. Everybody. So be sure to subscribe because we're going to do more of them. We might do, if you like this one, we might do some more in between tournaments, like maybe a weekly podcast or a bi weekly podcast. And this could be like the that. last one, too. This could be the last one, absolutely. <laughs> but very like, we got this. Well, guys, we're at Rayburn. Conditions are squirrely. First tour stop of the year. Andrew, what do you think? I mean, tell everybody uh, that's watching the conditions of the lake, kind of break it down a little bit. You know, the, the lake is in a weird state right now. I mean, we're like nine foot high or something like that. That's crazy. Over nine foot high. Yeah. Um, I've only seen this lake this high one other time, you know, in the years that I've fished this place. And you go way up the river or way up the lake, and it's super dirty. You can't even see your trolling motor. Um, I don't know, man. It's just crazy. There's a lot of deep hydrilla, and it, and it never grows that deep. It's just because the water's so high. Right. So, like, those fish are just in an absolute flood. You've ever, you ever seen it? You've never seen it. You're from Texas. You've never seen it this high, have you, Tom? No, but, it, it, you know, this lake swings. It goes up and down. It can handle it better than most any... And I tell you what, we're in Texas. I mean, I moved to Texas for bass fishing. It sucks. The bite's off right now, and guys are going to wreck them. There's going to be upper 20-pound bags, maybe 30 pounds. Somebody could come back from 15 pounds really? back. There's going to be a 10-pounder caught this week, most likely. There's going to be a lot of 6, 7, 10. <laughs> Can I follow you? <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so nervous now, dude. I, yeah. Can I follow you? The thing I is, wanna, it's, I'll catch your scraps. Yeah. But whatever you don't with your coals, I'll be okay yeah. with your coals. The thing is, yeah. I'm not going to catch those. I'm not on this week, but guys are going to. Yeah. And, and there are so many locals in the field. We'll get into the new field a little bit. There's a lot of guys. But I'm just like Texas fishing. You've, you've yeah. got it, David. Yeah. Falcon, Amistad, Fork, yeah. Toledo Bend. Our crap lakes down here wow. fish well. I mean, guys, you guys want to watch this week. It is, it's going to be a smash fest. Somebody's going to get into them and wreck them. Like, like Tom said, I mean, you're going to see a 10-pounder this week. The fish are fat, they're big. Uh, Rayburn's been fishing excellent the last few years, and even yeah. the last like month or two before now. Yeah. Uh, but with this water kind of fluctuating, things are changing, but you're definitely going to see a high 20 bag in the, in the next four yeah. days. Yeah, all right, so, so real quick, real quick. So he says 10-pounder, you say high 20s, and I agree with that. But just to put it in perspective, what's the biggest fish you put your hands on this week? Six and a half. What's the biggest fish that you caught this week? Four. What's the biggest fish you caught this week? Four. I had a three pounder, a little over three. Nice three pounder. Yes. Yeah. Billy, how many did you catch this week? Uh, three, but not on this lake. <laughs> he went to Kurt the other day, and that's a whole other video, actually. That David went over there, shot a YouTube video. And by the way, follow David's YouTube channel, okay? What is your channel? David Dudley Outdoors? Yep. B Lat. Yes, sir. Just, just, just my name, Brian Latimer. Brian Latimer. And follow, obviously, Andrew Upshaw's Instagram. Everybody's Instagrams, by the way. Actually, as I well. have a YouTube channel. You do? Yeah. Okay. Prestige's Worldwide Fishing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? No, for real. Really? Prestige Worldwide Fishing. I love that fishing. name. Why didn't we think of that name, Brandon? Pow, pow. Pow, pow. Pow, pow. pow, pow. Isn't that great? <laughs> Tom, you've got a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. What is it called? Tom Reddington with 1D. All right. There, there it is. Billy, you don't have a YouTube, no, but you've got an Instagram. And we're thinking about changing Billy's Instagram name from Billy Got a Bass to Billy Got a Bass, aka Cowboy. Because well, did you wear? Yeah, you didn't wear yep. them. Yes, he, he does. He's got his cowboy boots on right now. The first With, hour in Texas, across the border. Yes. I said, you know what? I'm never on a pair of cowboy boots. We fixed <laughs> he, that. He's, yeah, he showed up with cowboy boots, dude. 
What the oh, fresh yeah, one? He was talking funny. He had dip in his and mouth. And I like it. No. He didn't even dip. I don't do the dip. It, well, you, dip, you don't dip. dip, but you had dip with something in it. I don't I know what do it the was. Chew. I yeah. like chew. Ugh. Ugh. God, it was crazy. Terrible. So, yeah, it's going to be a wild week this week. Uh, the water still may even come up even more, which is crazy. A little bit. So, you, you know, but, and I was thinking about it yesterday, and you think about like a normal lake, and this is a good tip for you guys who are watching. A normal lake that doesn't have any grass, right? So there's just ledges and trees and whatnot these fish suspend on, and then of course your shoreline cover. When the lake would come up in a normal lake without that grass, those fish a lot of times would move with the water. The bulk of the fish, meaning like 80% of the population might move up shallow. But because we have so much offshore hydrilla, and there's so many fish in this lake that literally only live in the hydrilla, they probably never even swam up next to a tree on the shoreline other than maybe to spawn they stay out there in that grass. So if you take the, the bulk population, 100% of the fish in the lake, maybe 30% of them are up shallow and 70% of them are still out there in that grass. So if you're up shallow, you're fishing for 30% of the population or roughly, you know, and vice versa. So it makes it a little more complicated, but that is something to consider because when you have these high water conditions like this, it really throws a curveball. We did it at, at uh, Beaver Lake last year. Yeah. You know, it was crazy. all up in yards and, and that stuff. Was crazy. You know, it's it, it gets it gets crazy when that water gets like that, but but that's the deal. So, well, well the scary thing about fishing for the, the fish that are in flooded timber, you don't know if they're going to be at the very backs or right. the very front. Yeah. So you've got to cover such a spectrum. Yeah. You know, to try to catch them. So I went up really to a catch. bush and pulled up to a bush the other day, first day here. And I'm like, oh, look at that bush. That looks great. And I flipped over there, and I was watching my line go down, and I started having to pull line off, and it was nine and a half feet deep, <laughs> and I'm like. This is ridiculous. So I just literally started driving around with the panoptics because I'm like, if they're in there, I'll see them. I'm just going, yeah, no, there's none here. There's none here. No more to flipping for me. Let me just get on out of here. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy. So first of the year, first term of the year, we all have new sponsors. And that's really how we are able to do all these things out here on the road. So I do want to give our sponsors and everyone here a, a little opportunity to, to give a little thumbs up to the new sponsors. David, do you have a... Any new sponsors for this upcoming season that you'd like to give a big thumbs up for? Of course, I've been with Polaris now a couple of years, so if you're looking for ATV, mm -hmm. you definitely need to get your, give ATV a try with Polaris because if it can survive me, I know it can survive <laughs> anybody out there. I'm as rough on equipment as they get, so that and A3 Anglers, if you haven't checked out their bladed baits, it's a, a really cool bladed bait. Yeah, the Polaris's are good. I have one, and uh, I love it. We spend a lot of time on that thing, for sure. How about you, Andrew? Well, just to say about the Polaris, I, we've had a Polaris Ranger for, like, the last eight years, and we take it out west, out west Texas in the mountains. Really? And, I mean, you you cannot break those things. They're insane. Yeah. Uh, I actually got a new title sponsor this year, Strike King and Lose. Uh, oh, good. It became a big partnership, so that was really cool. Uh, oh, good. Otherwise, I mean, pretty much everything stayed the same, you know. Nice. Just glad to keep relationships where I can, and move forward where I can. So. Yeah, absolutely. How about you, Bilal? Cool. So I, I got a couple things going. Uh, Sponsor-wise, I got a new company called Phil Marine. It's a wireless kill switch. Um, and it also marks where you're at. You have, happen to have an accident, fall out of the boat, get your MOB. It's called the MOB. And uh, marks where you're at. Is that it's man also, overboard? Yes, sir. MOB. I fall man out all overboard. the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you time. probably yeah. do fall out. Yeah. So. So that's a, that's a partnership I'm pretty excited about. And then I also have, um, you know, I've been doing YouTube for, what, three years now? Yeah. So we started up uh, straight up fishing. So we're actually going to be traveling different places, going fishing, doing real cool stuff with a bunch of cool people. That's so good. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, and um, you'll see a lot of stuff about what I was talking about with MOB, too. Do a funny story about almost falling out with the boat. Oh, okay. So it was here, and, and there was a guy on tour. He doesn't fish anymore, and, and, and he was rooming with us. And he was new, and his, his boat was a little older, and he, he just wasn't as seasoned as maybe he should have been. And, and, and I, he said, take me out. It was after we got a, I got a check, and he says, take me out on this lake and show me how to catch a keeper, because he didn't catch any. And they were, they were busting pretty good over around the, uh, the bridge, you know? Yeah. And I said, okay, come on. So I, I jumped in his boat, and we ran across the lake. I put his trolling motor down, and I put it up on 100, and I hit the button, and the trolling motor just went, whoa, 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 whoa. And I'm like, I'm about to fall out of the boat. I'm like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And his pedal had like a foot of slack in it. You know, like, you know, he didn't. And I said, dude, you, this thing you're going to, like a bronken bull, it's going to throw you out of the boat. And he goes, yeah, I know, dude, it's thrown me out three times. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Are you serious? I said, there's a little screw you got to tighten. He didn't know it was, and I got a screwdriver yeah. in there, and I tightened it up, and he's like, 
wow, I had no idea. He goes, I've been wow. fishing like that forever. Oh it had like, it, it went on 100, dude, it would just go like this. Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> so new sponsors for me. Uh, very proud to announce right now, guys. Favorite fishing rods, okay? I've been with Akuma for a long time. Uh, Akuma's a great company. I had a lot of great success with them. I've caught a lot of fish with the Akuma products. But things have changed uh, business-wise on their end, and things just kind of worked out for me to make a move. And I'm excited to work with Favorite. I, I think it's, uh, it's a great rod company. Uh, B-Lad's been with them uh, for years. David's used the rods for a lot of years. Uh, there's a lot of guys using them. They feel good. I've used them this week. It's been good, and I'm excited about using the favorite rods. As far as reels go, I'll be using the favorite reels as soon as they get them kind of developed and we get through some of the prototype models. Spinning reels I'm going to be using, and bait casters. I'm just going to use various bait casters for this upcoming season, some Shimano's, probably even a few old Akuma's laying around. And then what I'm really, really, really excited about is this right here, guys. Not only a sponsor, I'm actually one of the owners of this company right here. So I'm very proud of this. Uh, we we're putting a lot of heart and effort into these baits right here. We're designing them, Guggen baits, good stuff. Uh, caught a lot of fish on them this week already. And we've got more stuff coming. We've got swim baits coming. We've got offshore swim baits. We've got an Okeechobee swim bait coming. I mean, it's good stuff. So Guggen baits has been a, been a big deal. And so those are my two big announcements for this year and excited about it. So it's, uh, I was nervous, you know, fishing your first tournament, getting out your first day of practice with rods and reels that you're not used to fishing with. And I fit, I, they just felt real natural. Yeah, like they fit right in good. I, I, yesterday I said, I feel good. There's so many different rods, dude. You got yeah. like rods from six and a half to yeah. almost eight foot. Yeah, so there is a lot of models. Lot and of I do models. like that because with my Akumas and I used all my TCS rods, we had uh, we had nine or 10 rods in that series that I used, but they, they have like a lot of rods. So if there's, you can really fine tune your fishing with the favorite lineup by going to, every one of them's a little bit different. Every model's a little different, actually. So, I'm excited about it. What about you, Tom? Well, the sponsors stayed the same, but I, I picked up a little gig. Uh, so on Pursuit Channel, through the first half of the year, they have Walmart's Real Life Saturdays. It's a three hour block, outdoor shows. We've got Jimmy Houston, Hank Parker, uh, Bassmasters is on there, Federation Angler. So a lot, of, a lot of your classic shows. And I'm the host of that. So I get to yeah. do the Ooh. intros, outros, do some fishing tips. Went over to Alabama, did a bunch of filming for that. So I'm show host, back That's on good. TV again a little That's bit. Good. So, so we yeah. get to catch him uh, every week for a little 30 yes. second, 45 second little little blimp, little little tosses. Yeah, Saturday mornings on Pursuit Channel from I think it's six to nine on Saturday mornings right. Central Time. So to DVR check it out. Six to nine. He's a three hour block. Three, dude. three hours of time, it, man. It's a block party. Three hours of time. Oh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna make me a big old big old cup of coffee. Come on, big old man, cup of coffee, and sit there and watch Tom Reddington every every Saturday morning. So, Billy, what you got to announce, uh, well, my friend? I actually what you got to announce? First sponsor ever. What? Ever. That's amazing, tell him, Billy. First, you got, first of all, tell him you're going pro. He's going pro in 19. His first tournament is right around the corner at Three Okeechobee. Weeks. Three weeks. So he's got his first sponsor. Yeah. Favorite rods and Guggen baits, which you kind of stole a little bit of the glory, but it's all good. I mean, but here, here's the good thing about mine, right? We're gonna have a booth yep. at the expo at every tournament. Yep. This booth, we'll have we'll have a whole big canopy, so if it's yep. raining, you can come hang out. We got the backdrop, and we're gonna have favorite rods there for sale. Yep. We're gonna have Guggen baits there for sale, and hey, those Guggen baits, merch. they're selling so fast, it's tough to find right. them in store. Not this hat. We're gonna have. Yes. All right. We'll have all that, and SMC hats too, by the yep. way. Scott's so. more part owner, so you should ask for you should negotiate for more right now because that's you get a good owner point. Right Very good. Yeah. Right you got leverage. You got a lot of leverage. It's now. a little scary calling him boss. Yeah, you got a lot of leverage. He's got to call boss. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's like, That's hey, he Billy, give me some coffee. I'm like, yes, sir, boss. Yeah. So, dude, I'm excited about that. I mean, right. you have the me booth too. there. We'll be able to interact. David is going to come by the booth and hang out with us on some of the tournaments whenever you can. I'll Andrew's going to be hanging out. I'll be there all year. If I don't make the cut, I'll be there yeah. uh, at the Polaris booth and at yeah. Scott's booth. So come hang out. Yeah, be allowed to be there. It'd be a great opportunity for the yeah. fans to come out and kind of give them a place to kind of interact and kind of come to and uh, and hang out with all of us because if we can keep growing the sport the way it is, I mean, there's so many. We're here in Texas and there's so many high school anglers that I think we're going to have a good turnout this week for sure. I'm excited about it. One good, one good thing I think everybody will agree, when you show up and we're actually there in person, a lot of times on comments we can't, respond to every comment yeah. people ask questions yep. but if you actually show up 
and we are there with we us. Talk we can, to you. we can, yeah. you can talk to us. So it's instead of us, like we may have 400 comments to respond to. And a lot of times we can't do it, but if you come in person, I mean, you yep. got us right there in person, so yep. you can talk right with us. Yep, that's a, good. good that's good stuff. Except for Billy, Billy doesn't like to talk. So yeah, if you, Billy might, <laughs> Billy might snark you a little bit, but the rest of us will talk to you. No, Billy starts singing or something. Scotty even gives out his cell phone number. Uh, so. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. You can give out your cell phone. Number. Yeah. All does. right. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna take a real quick break. <laughs> we're gonna get a real quick break. Reset everything, and we're gonna come right back to you. And here's what we got coming. We got some crazy fish catches with videos included. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we are back right now. We've got this is this is great. We've got some good stories. I started thinking when I was coming up with this podcast, kind of outline what could we what could we talk about, and I just kept thinking about like crazy fish catches, right? Like crazy fish catches, crazy things that happened on the water. It Dudley always comes to my mind because he's involved in in so many crazy fish catches. The whole segment we could actually for the rest of the year have a crazy fish catch from Dudley every podcast. Okay, we could. <laughs> Honestly, so now we're going to jump into it with Dudley's crazy fish catch from Beaver Lake. Yeah. Beaver Lake, you won the tournament. Yeah. Tell me all about it. Tell, tell us all about it, then we'll watch the video. So to set the story up, the day before, I actually saw this fish come up and flash at my wacky worm. And I actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's watch the video. Let's watch the video. So everybody will kind of see it. Then tell the full story. Okay? Is that is that better? So here we go, guys. Let's watch it right here. This is Dudley in rare form. This is good. All the flooded trees. This is a different one. Is it Nick? Is it the one you're thinking of? Yeah, this is the one. That's what I call this going after him, boys. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Look, his head's all wet. Uh, How cold was it? That one will have a replay from two years ago. This time, only got my arm. Yeah, this isn't the deep dive one. This isn't the deep dive. We'll save that one for the nether, for the other uh, other podcast. Because, like I said, we've got. We've got fish catches like this in Dudley all the time. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, the one yeah. in the dock. So, so tell me about this one here. We'll save the other one, guys. We had a little miscue on my fault. That's my fault on that one. But tell me about that fish catch. Well, that one right there, I was throwing actually a wiggle wart. And a lot of times you want to try to get down by the base of the trees, even with a crankbait. And... Of course, that one, I was actually counting it down. I'm like, my crankbait, so here's the pole timber. And I knew about when my crankbait was going to come by the trunk. And I'm like, right about now, bam. I mean, he hit it right away. And I, so, of course, he went and did figure eights. And I, it, it was so clear. I could see him down there flashing and flash. So I'd yo-yo him up. And I knew I had all the treble hooks. So I'd pull him up, and he'd go back down. And I'd pull him up, and he'd go back down. And I knew I had to work my way through a bunch of limbs. But anyways... I ended up getting him. I had to go down. I got my head a little wet and my arm a little wet, but not like that fish catch you talked yeah, about. Yeah, we'll, we'll save it. That's a teaser for the next podcast because yeah. we're going to show that one. And I, I think the only thing hanging on was his toes. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. literally was his toes. Yeah. yeah. It was full, full, six feet down. You were five feet down at least. It was yeah. crazy. And I, I, one of the worst things about that video, and, and I'll explain it, is when – I actually dove down, and this is the first time, and I don't care if I'm on camera or not, this is the <laughs> first time in my life, the video he's talking about, I pulled my head up, and my head was wet, and I thought I saw a thin spot on my head. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going ball. Going ball. I didn't I'm even do it. Ball. it was, I, I got the fish, but in, in my heart, when I, I saw like a thin spot on my head, that's when I, it yeah. hurt me. I mean, yes. it hurt me bad. Yes, you're like, forget the tournament win, yeah. I'm going bald. Yeah. Oh, well, listen, D- Dudley is the king of just epic stuff like that. You remember the Ranger M1, the chainsaw oh, deal? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Epic catches every yes. time. Dudley's always bringing drama. Oh, yeah. Drama in every time. In the Chickamauga dude. tournament, uh, underneath that dock, there was actually some crappy line. And if you watch that video, 
I couldn't figure out what was going because my line was here and I could see it like do a 90 degree turn and I kept, I was like, why is my line here and the bass over here? Anyways, everything happened so quick, so fast, and that was a good one. And then yeah. finally I realized, I'm like, oh, it's on fishing line. Yeah. And then it broke the, broke it. Too much through. drama, dude. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's full of drama. Wow. <laughs> Andrew, do you got, you got a really good crazy fish catch? I don't have anything like that. I mean, I've caught some 10-pounders where they'll wrap you up. And yeah. It just gets crazy. I actually, I do have one. So. On Toledo Bend, we caught a 43-pound bag. 43-pound bag? 43-pound. We weighed every one of them. A bass? A bass. Five, our five oh biggest. Wow. On uh, July 4th weekend, about three years ago. Well, we were graphing, and, and we are using our garments. And I, I came over a little spot. as an old-school spot that I used to catch them a long time ago. I saw two dots, a big dot and a little dot. And me and my best friend, Zach Cottle, we, we turned around, and my dad was with us, too. We turned around with both fire and worms over there. And he sets the hook immediately, and it's a three-pounder. I set the hook, and I'm like, dude, I got a giant. And he's like, oh, man, no, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, yeah. I'm telling you, this is a really big one. And I'm like seesawing it, like Dudley was talking about. I'm yeah. just seesawing it, seesawing it. And I'm only throwing like 14-pound line. And I'm just, the whole time, and I'm like, I'm about to break this. And it just floats up, and it's an 11. Like 11, 11 and a half, something like that. Wow. But, uh, wow. I mean, just... It was crazy. crazy. It was an epic day for my best friend and my dad. I mean, like we caught somebody seven pounds. Bag. It's crazy. Forty-three pound bag. I, I had a, I had a, I had a forty. 43, 40, I don't know, forty something pound bag in Florida flipping one time on film, and then I did a, uh, a forty something pound bag on Okeechobee when the lake was low. Oh wow. Years ago on uh, King Shads, the old Strike King King Shads. Oh, Remember those oh, things? Yeah, the lake yeah. was low and there's holes out in the lake, and all the fish had got out there. And uh, I caught two legit over 10 that day, and a couple nines and a couple eights. I've still never caught a double digit bass. Yeah. I've I weighed either. one. What? I, I weighed either. one. No, no, I have, I have never, never caught, caught a double digit. I've caught three nine pounders and a few eight pounders, and then. Yeah. Really? I thought I was the I've only one. I've never caught a 10 pounder yeah. in my life. I, I weighed one that, that day, and I went, put it on the scale. I'd already caught a 10 4. Paid on the scale, weighed 915. And I'm like, oh man. And it went, and then it settled and went to 10 0 0. And I was 10 pounder. So it was a legit yep. 10. I had two legit 10s that day. I'm yeah. still void of it. You need to come to Toledo. So I know Toledo being that fishing very good right now, but I've got 18 over 10 on Toledo by itself. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. 18 over I'm 10. Not going, I've wow. got a 12 and a couple 11s um, and just a bunch wow. of 10 pounders. It, for Rayburn, you know, we yeah. talk about Rayburn. Rayburn has a lot of that six to eight pound range yeah. fish, a lot of them. And it doesn't have as many tens, it really doesn't. But Toledo doesn't have as many of those six yeah. to eights, but it has a lot of 10 pounders in it. So we've got a, we've got a fish catch, and I know what Brian's gonna say, because we talked about it in the truck coming <laughs> here. And and we're, we're, I don't have the video pulled up on this, Drama. but we're gonna show you. Right now you're gonna get to watch it. But, but so here, let's do this real quick. You guys watch this clip right now. She might go ahead and make a bed there. All of a sudden I hear Brian say, dude, she's got it. I look over, I see the bass sitting there. He sets the hook with a spinning rod. All I hear is drag oh, slipping it, and the fish isn't moving. Oh my gosh, dude, you got her. Dude, you've got the stick. Then all I see is her head start shaking. She takes off, does a big loop around the bush, gets stuck in the brush pile and goes in there like a turtle he thinks he loses her. She's in the brush, Scott. She, I need to go. I need to go. She's in the scout. She's in the brush. She's in this brush. I don't know if it's on or not. No, she's still on. Yeah, she's on. She's on? Yeah. Can't see anything. She's on. So I know I got her on light line. So I'm, you know, I'm bowed up. I'm trying not to put too much pressure. And it's just not coming. I'm like, I lost her. So we start going up towards it. She's stuck in the brush pile. I can't see anything. And Scott's like, he's right there. He's right there. He's right there. And I see a, a piece of green. And then Scott started taking his shirt off, and I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? She's right there. Dude, guys. I'm going in. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> yeah, I see her. Okay. Oh my God, I've never seen that All before. right, so we gotta figure this out. Look at her. You see that? I see it, dude. I have never seen that before. She's just laying there in the brush. swimming on the Scott Martin Challenge, boys. I did not know I was getting it myself into all of this. She went right to that sink. Okay. All right, you see her? This is going to be so cold. Yeah, cold. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> you gotta be touching the boat. It's right down, right there where you. It's like we're noodling for bass. He dove into 58 degree water. <laughs> I tell you, she's just sitting there. That's the wildest thing. This is definitely the craziest thing I've ever done, but you know what, I wanna win, and I get in the water, and I'm not kidding you, this stuff is cold. I go down, and I'm thinking I could hold my breath for like 45 seconds or so. It's like 10 seconds into it. I don't know if it's the drilling or what, but I am about to drown. I come up spitting water, my glasses are all crooked. I don't know what's going on. He's got my life for sure, I feel it. <laughs> this is the wildest thing. Yes! 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 <laughs> Come on, baby. Check that out. She's hooked in the mouth. She's hooked in the mouth. <laughs> that is too awesome. All right, so ironically, my, my epic fish kiss story is, is, is with Scott. Is with Scott. We were doing, it was my first year on tour, right after the tour tournament at Hartwell. Uh, we did a SMC show, right? Yeah, that was an SMC, SMC show, and uh, the fish are spawning. Fish are spawning. So we'll set this set this up. You know, we're pulling this pocket. This is a fish that you had found. Yep. The day before, Scott found a five this pounder. Fish. Found a five pounder. Five pounder on bed. We're doing a challenge against uh, Matt Airy and Cobb. Uh, Cobb and Cobb. Yeah. And we needed a five pounder we to needed, beat them. We needed we a five needed pounder. Bad. Yeah. So we pull in this pocket. He's like, I got this. I got this five pounder. So I'm like, go ahead, Scott does it. You know, Scott's the sight fisherman right so let him do his thing you know he, he fools with it a while fools with it a while he ain't doing nothing it's in a brush pile it's someone you know how people take yeah. scrap yeah, uh, like yard scrap yard throw, trash. and then the lake had come up and and there was a big yard trash pile with limbs everywhere everywhere like in eight foot of water and he was just right beside it so scott's fooled with this fish for a while for a while i'm like dude let me just make a cast i just make one cast up there with my my nico nico rig cinco I was throwing cinco with just a little weight in the corner of it i just throw it over there in the bed pull it up to it and he just you know, he does this. You know how they do that thing yeah. where they do that? I was like, dude, he's going to get it. I tell Scott, I was like, Scott, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it, he's got it. So I set the hook. And me, it's, Spin it's rod. All, yeah. 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 all this, you know, all this drama. Just drama, drama, drama. Dude, the thing goes in the yard trash. Like, like it's like beaver. limbs. Like, like it's like a, it, it, yeah, it's it like a like it was a beaver hut. It's it like went in, it went it gone. I've never seen this before. <laughs> never seen this before. It goes it down in the, in the hut, right? It goes down in, in the in the trash. It stops. And just is like just laying there. Well, first of all, like it's dead. He he, he thinks it's off. Yeah, he I, thought, it's I thought it's off. It's not moving. I think it's off. We troll motor over top of it and I look and I can see the shim the shine <laughs> like of the bubble green speck. And he's like, what did we do? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. But we need it. Yeah. And he's like, wait, wait. He's like, I got like six pound line. It's 58 degree water at yeah. this point. 58. Yeah. I'm not getting in. Yeah. You can, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't need this. There's no money. <laughs> I was like, you want to win? Cool. I'm not jumping in 58 degree water. Cause you could see him down there. It took a minute. Cause I mean, he was down, he was down in the thing, just laying there like he was dead. Never knew that before. Never knew they did stuff like that. So Scott like starts de -roving. It's not a, it's not a warm day. And the water's cold. Derobing. I mean, he's derobing. I mean, like, he's like, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing this. Dude jumps in and gets that. But and it wasn't easy to get it, was it? Dude, well, I went down <laughs> I, and I, I, I went down and I, you can't see yeah. good, you know, because it's all blurry. And I feel the line and I don't want to hit it too hard. I'm gonna break it. And I finally get my hand and I can't hold my breath long. And it's like I'm, I'm nervous and it's cold. <laughs> And I'm down like 10 seconds. I got to come up again. Like, like all I, in. We're not talking like about I'm, like. I'm, my feet are up in the air like this. Yeah. Like I'm like. Ooh. All in. So all finally in. I go down a couple times and I finally go back down and I grab the fish and it wakes up and comes out and hits me in the face and it's going tut, 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 in my face and I finally just bear hug it and I come up to the they water. Come up with I come it. up to the water and I got it by hands and it's just, it was just that crazy. Was a, nothing like crazy that has ever happened to me. I hand him to him and we're screaming yeah. and I jump in the boat. Blew all the audio. Yeah. It was, yeah. I've never had anything like that ever happen, ever. What color, what color underwear did you have on? Black. Black. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes. Remind me of that crazy. Seinfeld episode. Crazy. I would ever want to be in a boat with you in underwear again. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Seinfeld episode. That was it. So what about you, Tom? Crazy fish catch. Well, when I was uh, I was in high school, I started out pretty meager. I had a uh, used a little rental boat all the time, a, like a 14 foot John boat, one of those real thin ones. Had a six horsepower motor on it, thing light as could be, and put a little trolling motor on it, a little 45 pound. So I was out fishing. It was almost dark one night, and there the fish are right on the bank. 
So it's you skip the jig underneath the trees, fish come out and get it. And it, it's starting to get good now. I mean, it's almost pitch black. Well, I see a little, you know, they're chasing shad up there underneath the underneath the yeah. trees. I see it splashing around. So I take that jig, and it's a big old overhanging pine. So, luck out, make a perfect skip in there. Boom, hits it. Well, that little that little John boat and that trolling motor, I mean, it's so lightweight. So I start I start drifting. I can't even turn this fish. I start pulling. It pulls me like 10 feet. And the whole, whole John boat's just going crazy. Yeah, so it's like yeah. pulling me in. So I, I got my trophy fish on. And all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> I was like, what is that, right? <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't a bass, it was a stink of raccoons on the shore. And this thing, really? and that, that boat is so light, and he's on ground, he goes running up the shore. Well, I figure out that he'll stop, and it's in his paw, and he goes, <laughs> he's just like hissing at this thing. And then he takes off running, but I've got him like stymied, and he, then he'll, as soon as he pulls, he's like, ee, ee, ee. He's just That's doing awesome. this. You caught a raccoon. Yeah, you caught so a raccoon. So I'm in this little John boat. I can't break it. I'm pulling for all I'm worth. I'm just pulling the John boat. He's like this. Him. Raccoons like this. Yeah. So I had to finally. I started up that that eight horse. No. And it snapped. Lassoed it on the um. Yeah, just lassoed on the clean. The, back the up. The craziest. <laughs> thing, he, there's like six bouts of him doing the hissing and the squirting though. And the craziest part was there were five <coughs> other raccoons on the hillside and they're watching me, and they're watching him. That's watching funny. him. He starts hissing. They look at him. That's funny. Look at me, it's like like they're watching a tennis match. You could have got rabies, dude. That's I just, messed up. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. I hooked a beaver with Billy. What color was he biting? Uh, yeah. It was black blue. Black blue. Black, black blue. blue. Is that black what blue. they like? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> because you're a coon hunter, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to figure I hooked it out. A, I hooked a beaver at Potomac River oh, with yeah. Billy in the boat. It, it burned my thumb. It was snake stripping so much line, dude. It went by the boat at about 100. Right? And, and, and I go, I got a beaver. And Billy's like... Dude, we're gonna have to take him to the vet. He was all worried. <laughs> <laughs> he felt bad. He felt bad about the beaver. I'm like, dude, I didn't. Bed. I mean, I didn't even my chatter bait. I don't know what to tell you, but those are some crazy fish catches. So I'm trying to think of some other some other ones, but I'll tell you what we're gonna do. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take. I'm gonna take another quick little break. Okay. We're gonna come back. We got about. We're about halfway through. A little over halfway through this podcast. And I and I'm thinking of a couple. Not necessarily fish catches. One of them's a fish catch. One of them's not. That I have some video I'm gonna show you guys. You're gonna get a kick out of. So we come back from this little break. We're gonna show you a couple more little videos. All right, guys. Welcome back to the SMC podcast, episode one here at Sam Rayburn Lake. Little FLW pre-party. We're telling fish stories. Some good ones so far. But I started thinking about a couple things that happened. One happened recently, and one happened last year. That includes Billy and Brandon. Yes. So let's go. Since we're on fish, let's go to let's go to let's go to Brandon's fish catch. This is epic, dude. This is more epic than your fish catches, my friend. <laughs> Tell me if you would do this. Uh oh. Wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. Let me pull it up here. It's on my phone. Is that? Search under Brandon. Uh, no, it's, yeah, gotta, I got it right here. Gotta go DJ I got it right here. Okay, here it is. I have it right here. Okay, here it is. Because the other one's on there. <laughs> He's on a bridge. He's fishing from shore, him and Rob. He can't lift the fish up. It's like a five pounder. I think you should jump in the Would you do this? How do you get slack? Like, right where he is. What is he doing? That's what I call going how did he after him. Yeah. <laughs> now, how did he get out? Look, he swims all the way to the shoreline over here to this campground. Look at him kicking. Look at him kicking. Look at him kicking. He looks like a little baby learning to swim. He's got it. Look, he's underwater. I just don't know why I didn't go to there in the first That's place. good. That's a big one. That's a St. Clair, dude. That's big. That's a big one for St. Clair. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's at St. Clair? Yes. Oh, my Lord. Yep. Wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> That's good. That's funny. That's funny. That's good stuff, dude. That, that, Dudley, I think that even beats your Oh, absolutely. Off I'm going to give you a 9.9. 9 on the entry? On the, on the dive. Yeah. yeah. I, I, 
you, you made a little bit too much of a splash. The I'm dog paddle. <laughs> his dog paddle. That, that saved it. Yeah, that was a you were like, it, dude. It was so fast. Michael like Butterfly. Michael like Phelps. Like Phelps got what? nothing on you, Brandon. <laughs> nothing on you. Oh, God. Michael Phelps will be calling you getting uh, swimming lessons from you from that video. <laughs> All right, so here's another one. Here's another one right now. This is good. This is really good. This is this week. So we're, we're staying at a house down at the, um, at the lake. Let me start this real quick. And so we went fishing. I'm fishing in a Billy Can't Fish this week, and neither can Brandon at all. So in the boat with me. So they're standing on the bank just making some casts. And this is what happens right here. So tell them what happened. Just talk through it. Well, we had just went to the tackle store and I bought a shatter bait. Why'd you put shorts on? You need shorts. Seventeen ninety nine. Uh, the jackhammer huh? shatter bait. Why'd you need shorts? Two dollar trailer. My Should second cast, pants. right? I'm trying to skip it up through the trees, and it gets hung. And I'm like, man, that's twenty bucks. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get to catch that's a fish, cheap. so I had to go out and get it, man. So you got to, you got to. That didn't work. Yeah, so you're going to take a boogie board out? Well, I thought about it. He's trying to get to the tree. It's, it's like got his chatterbait in it. Oh, look at some. The tree's like 30 yards <laughs> out there. So it's like 12 foot deep. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, he didn't know. He's thinking it's shallow. Yeah. Well, I was thinking it was like way <laughs> It's sinking, dude. It's so cold. <laughs> Why is it sinking? I don't know. Well, because they're not made to surf on. Look at that balance. That was a bad idea, too. Yeah? Are you trying to surf out there? Well, I'm just trying to get There's it. There's no going. wave, dude. I'm thinking it'll float if I can get it out. You should have done like a skimboard. Run from back here. Yeah. And thrown <laughs> yeah. it like they do at the beach. And you could have like, to the tree. That. Until you got there and then you see. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Were you drinking? He no. says he was trying to Are skip and look how high the line is. <laughs> Yeah, why is like I was trying to skip? Good, it's like I was trying to skip and the thing's like 10 foot the in line, the tree. The line is all the way up in the tree. Dude, that is not that skipping. That is not skipping, dude. <laughs> that's a good point. Oh my god. How did it get so high? That's called a bad cast. Well, I was trying oh, to get wow. my god. Oh, wow. Dude, this wow. is this is it. Deep. When is when at this point did you say Listen, bad here, idea? Here's the deal. When did you say seventeen dollars <laughs> bad idea? Once the water gets above your waist and then your jewels get wet, you're all in. That's true. I mean, if I could have stayed dry there, I mean. Billy, you know I got like fifty jackhammers. Huh? Oh my gosh. He's right. sponsored by Z-Man, dude. That ain't right. I, got jackhammers, dude. I got all mine for free from him. He hooked me up. I know. You're like a squirrel, dude. Oh my god. Had I known that, we would have just like. I didn't know you could climb a tree that like good. Flop. He's like a little squirrel. Yeah. He's from South Carolina. Boots. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You, you gotta twist your feet around the base <laughs> of the tree. It hurt. Did you I I haven't seen this footage. This is the first really? time I've seen this. Really? Yeah. Yes. I'm oh you got your tattoo yeah. off. Tattoo removal on your yeah. leg. Yeah. 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 Okay, you've got it out, you've removed it. Now now what's your plan? <laughs> what's your plan now? <laughs> you just well, gotta push off of your feet. I haven't gotten it yet. It's still like coming around the tree. Line. So then I throw it, and Rob's like, "Great, you threw it in another tree." And then I just got really. Oh, I depressed. feel like it's about to happen right here. And I got really depressed. <laughs> that's, All in. That's not a nine point nine, oh. is it, David? No, that was like a three. Oh. It's like. And you got the chatterbait back. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. All right, that is definitely the most epic. Fish catch or lure oh, retrieval. Yeah. I'm yeah. going with the cast. I'm not even worried about yeah. the, the the cast hey, was hey, more walk, epic Brian, than the tree climbing. Walk away. Just walk away from it. <laughs> so did you get the cast back? Was bad. Yeah. That was a bad cast. <laughs> when you're skipping trees and it ends stop, up stop, stop. 20 foot in the tree, that's walk a problem. Away. At least that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got a little got a little trivia now. We're going to move on from now. It's good stuff, and we're going to do that every one of these podcasts. We're going to show some crazy moments that we've captured on film. Some stuff we're going to kind of tap into the FLW archives. And, and by the way, guys, you're not only subscribing to Dudley's and all of our channels here and the SMC, but just subscribe to FLW Outdoors' YouTube channel because a lot of these videos, tournament stuff, is on there as well. And you can watch all the good fishing tips. There's lots of cool things on FLW Outdoors' YouTube channel. But let's talk now. Let's kind of switch gears back to the tournament. Let's kind of wrap up with the tournament. <clears throat> we were here last time. A couple of trivia questions for everybody. The last time we were here... Who won the tournament and how many pounds? Brian Thrift, 73. 73 pounds, Brian Thrift. 
Did you I remember? I don't do research. Or I don't do any of that. You didn't so know? I'm out. You remember, didn't you? I knew he won, but I, I can't recall at all how he caught him. I don't really? Know. Oh, um, yeah. I, know yeah. He I remember he went, he went way up yeah. some arm, like where nobody goes, where the locals kept saying, I can't believe he's running it. And every day he ran it. Yeah. yeah. Where no, normally people don't yeah. run, like, because you run tear your motor off. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait. Yeah. He didn't even, he just pointed but it that's north and went. Though. He like, didn't care. Yeah. He's like, it reminds me of like Tommy Biffle. Yeah. Like Tommy Biffle's like, there's two speeds out on as fast as that boat will go and wherever it'll go. So. I finished, I got a check in that tournament, I was sight fishing, and I caught. A couple big ones on spooks and stuff, and I lost a couple. I lost a real big one on a spook. It hit me out in the middle. I'm going down the bank and swam out in the middle, and I thought, no problem, I got him, and he got me stuck in a submerged tree. Turn Yeah, and, and I was fighting him, and I felt my braid start going, and then it locked up, dude, and he was about eight feet down, had me in a big tree. You know, he like jumped in. Six or seven pounds. I would have, but he got off. I think he was off, and he just ripped off. You can't leave the boat yeah. anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to keep your feet in the boat. Okay, so here's another trivia question. This is a good one. What old school lure was used in that tournament? I, Not by Brian Flynn. I, I, I got this one. What old school <laughs> lure that hasn't been used since in a professional tournament? Uh, Steve Kennedy yep. and Salad Sassy. What, uh, <laughs> what is it? Salad Sassy? Snaggle Sally. And yes. You talk Ooh. about breaking it. He had to have taken a fight. No telling what that hook yeah. was. 19, 27 hook. Yeah. He had it's to have taken a catfish hook. Yeah. yeah. Something I don't know cheap. about this. Really? Yes. Yeah. Snag with salad. salad. The, the, the spoon. It, no, it's no, got no, a no, big no, Colorado no, it's blade a, on it. It's an inline. Head. It's got two weed guards. Yeah. And it's a big skirt. And yeah. it's a. Uh, it's an inline spinner. Yeah. That's what I know. Like a musky lure. What was he doing with it? Fishing around trees with it. Yeah. Yes. Wreck it on, dude. Oh, my God. Wreck it on. I can hear him fishing with that, too. Oh, God. God He was was doing good. No, he'd have hooked like a seven and and played it for like 12 minutes and just talked to the fish, talked to the camera and everything. Come on, fish. (laughs) Dang. That's awesome. So we got a lot of changes this year. FLW has got a lot of new faces. We've got a new tour on on the map now, MLF, Major League Fishing. There's been a big shift. Everybody that's been asking me all about Major League Fishing and kind of what's going on in the industry. We don't want to get too deep into that one right now because that's a whole episode. and Maybe we'll do that on another one. But basically what happened in a nutshell is that we had a big shift. You had anglers leave Bassmasters to go to MLF. You had FLW anglers leave FLW to go to MLF. And some shifted to Bassmaster. So everything kind of shifted. Some guys came back to FLW. So it was like this big you know, shift of anglers going around. But the biggest thing that we've got going on right now is that we have a whole bunch of new blood. And that's actually encouraging when you really think about it. Because when you look at the other tours, they have a lot of guys that you've heard of. But we've got a lot of guys, we've got a lot of superstars. Like This is all I have to say. We've got a lot of superstars over here that you don't know about yet. You know, some hardcore anglers that, that are going to get the job done. What do you think? Yeah, every year you, you see a couple leave and you think, oh, it's going to be easier to get a check. And the people that come in, it's every year the the talent that comes in is incredible. We have an All-American winner coming in, guys that, you know, it was a couple of years ago, the Johnston brothers, Canadians, and Gus, you're like, Canadians? Oh, you know, bring that Canadian money down here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, halfway through the season, you're like, wow. Yeah. Like, Canadian what are you going to do here? You oh, know? yeah. yeah. Can you transfer that to American dollars? Yeah, there, there's, a, there's a lot of really good anglers on the tour again. There's a lot of locals in this tournament too. You know, what I say locals, guys that live here around around the lake. Um, it's gonna be a tough year, believe it or not. I think it's I gonna think be, so, yeah. because here's what, when you get that new blood, and you'll agree with this, David, you get this new blood, right? And these guys that are, that are that quit their jobs to become a professional fisherman, that put all their money on the line to make this work. Those guys are getting up an hour early every day. They're fishing to the last minute every day. I mean, they're, it's do or die for these guys. When you fish like that, it's new enthusiasm. you figure out some things. And so there's going to be some guys that at the end of the season, you're going to say, Man, look at these guys in the top 10 angler of the year. Never heard of them, but I'm telling you, they're good fishermen. Yeah, that's 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 the deal for sure. Well, day in and day out, they're going to wreck them. I mean, we all, FLW's full of hammers, and they're always going to catch them. I mean, we still got guys like Dudley and Thrift and you. Oh, yeah. 
and we still have a lot of our big name guys too. But yep. yeah, we are going to have some new guys that you're going to be like, who's this guy? Another thing that's new for this year is the Marshall program. This is something, if you're watching this and you're a high school angler or you're any, anybody that loves to fish and you want to have an opportunity to jump in the boat with one of us along with all these other anglers we're talking about, FLW has a Marshall program set up. And it's where you can pay, I forget the exact amount, is it 100? It's like 100 bucks. 100 bucks, and you get to hang out for two straight days with the anglers, maybe even three days, depending on how it all shakes out with the anglers on the water and watch us fish. You get to hang out and be part of our social media. You get to take photos. You get to just do all these great things with us in the boat and be part of the experience. The best part is they get to win money and they can win a boat, I think. Win a boat? What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about it, David? Dude, that's an, I didn't know that it was only $100 to fish with some of the best fishermen in the world and yep. if you get drawn and you get to put your name in a hat for a ranger boat yeah that's a no-brainer yeah. like i just got goosebumps and i think a <laughs> lot of us will sit here and think about this we can't deny it there's times i wanted to be in scott's boat Absolutely. and watch yeah. him yeah. personally in a top yeah. 10. Yeah. there's been times when i want to be and we i haven't really had i didn't do the non-boater side but to be in somebody's boat for eight hours, which you don't get to see on TV, you get to see them watch them go from a watermelon red to a green pumpkin and watch him start smoking them. Well, on TV, you didn't see him do that adjustment. So to sit in the boat and actually watch his process of his mind work out that puzzle for the day is an awesome program. And for a hundred dollars, I didn't know that. That's that's an incredible deal. You can't get a guide trip for no. a fifth of that. Two, I mean, yeah, two days no. of a guide trip. You're looking right. at twelve hundred, and, and you pay a hundred dollars to go with some yeah. of the best fishermen in the world. Yeah. No brainer. Here's what I say with that too, and it's and 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 I, and I love this point of it. As an angler, you only know what you know, right? So if you're at home and you and you go fishing every weekend in these tournaments. You're going to fish the worms, and you're going to fish the spinnerbaits and the crankbaits the way that you like to fish them. You're going to make your decisions. And it's real hard for you to, like, the only way to learn, right, is to either watch a video where somebody teaches you something new, or you spend time in the boat, like David's saying, where you get to see those small adjustments, and you get to see how David fishes it. He's, he's going to fish different than I'm going to fish, and b -Lat's going to fish different than Tom's going to fish. We all have our own little ways of fishing. And if you can get a little nugget or two from all these best anglers out there, you're going to turn yourself into a fantastic angler. And the, the other thing about it is you can watch people do it on a video, but when you watch them in person, your confidence in that technique or doing it, your confidence goes out. I'll never forget the guy who took me out and showed me how to, I knew we knew about skipping docks. But once I visually saw it in the boat with him, my confidence went yep. out the roof. So yep. it's, it builds confidence in person. If yep. you're a co-angler, you're going to be focused on trying to catch those fish instead of learning. And if it's your co-angler and there's a secret and you just catch him on it, they'll say, what are you throwing? Oh, I'm throwing a jig. But you won't tell them that, well, it's the, I let it stop for a second before I reel it, that those little nuances, right. if you're sitting there watching, like you said, you can see it or you can ask the questions and find out this, the real secret sauce. Absolutely. You get the full effect in person instead of through TV. TV has, because it's TV, they have to cut it down. <coughs> you get, I've always said, you have to watch a game. It's like watching the highlights on ESPN. If you only see him hit a home run and you only see the highlights, but you didn't see everything building up to that game, like you have to watch the full game. And the only way to do that is get in the boat eight hours a day and watch watch the game. That's what yeah. that's what you see. Doing. I like it for the full raw emotion. Right. Because like like say for instance you're out there and you're it's a grind and you're yeah. not catching anything and all of a sudden you catch an eight pounder. Yeah. Like it's just that emotion. Like I mean we've all been there. We caught a big one oh, and yeah. you're like oh my god. Like you get so jacked and that's my that's what I live for. And I. I Anybody that's around these areas, like if you don't sign up for this, you're crazy. Yeah, it, I mean, it's it's it a would no brainer. It would be so much fun. If I wasn't fishing the tour, you think I wouldn't sign up for this? Oh yeah, yeah. In a yeah I would. <laughs> yeah, no I'd doubt. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. No doubt. Hundred dollars. How, how much have you spent at a tackle store this week? That's right. You know, yeah. think about it. A little baggy like that. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, right. like, baggy. Yeah, just think, I'll just not spend my hundred dollars this month and yeah. go jump in the boat and learn. That's what we're about. Just yeah, learn. yeah. It's a it's a heck of a program. Real quick, we're getting ready. We have got a couple more minutes. We're gonna close this thing out. I'm gonna run through New Year's resolutions. What's yours? Oh gosh. Yes, I feel right on you. Spot. 
New Year's resolution. <laughs> I reckon. I don't know. I reckon not gain much weight on the road this year. <laughs> How about you, Andrew? Oh, uh, my New Year's resolution is eat more, work out less. I like it. I like that. I like I'm on that plan food. right now. Yeah, I mean, why not? I don't really do New Year's. I do it like month by month when I feel like I need to reset. But uh, I want to be more positive this year. Yeah. It's easy to get negative out there because mm -hmm. most of the time when you go to a tournament like this week, it's eight yeah. foot high and drama. <laughs> Stressful. And it Stressful. stresses you out. So it's like all year my, my whole mantra for the whole year is just yeah. in spite of. I got positive. you. All right, my New Year's, New Year's resolution is to the remainder of the year is to get up before time and be on the water before time. Oh, yeah. said, you already failed at that. Yeah, you already failed. Well, so well it started just now, the, <laughs> <Okay>. making my <laughs> resolution now. Okay? Because I hadn't even seen Tom this week, hardly, because we get up yeah. and he's gone. Even this morning. At five, yes, even this morning. On the off day. Yes. He brought but us kolaches this morning. Yeah. If, it, that if was he good can just get up that was before good. noon, we'll be a, that'll be an accomplishment. So it'll drive you towards your goal. So that'll be, that'll be good. <laughs> All right, Billy, what's yours? Uh, mine, mine's a little mushy, but I think everybody can relate. It's not funny. I mean, I'm gonna love my wife more. Cause here, and, and like that's, that. okay, that's good for you. I like that. No, it's not. Relate. That's Here's the deal. I'm gonna be away from home a lot. Yeah. Yeah. With the tour and the coasters that I'm fishing. Yeah. I need my wife at home. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I need to, when I'm at home. 100%. I need to love her more. Thank you, honey. All I right. Love you. I like that. We'll end it with that. It was a great you. one to end it with, guys. Tell me what you think. Drop some comments below. And uh, first, our first podcast, SMC Podcast, FLW Free Party, good Sam Rayburn. Very, very Tournament starts tomorrow, or actually while you're watching this, it's going on today. So get in the truck right now. Come down to Umphreys Pavilion right here in Brookville. Come hang out Thursday, Brooke Friday, Brooke. Saturday. What is it? What is it? Brooklyn. 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 Okay. Brooklyn. 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 It's a bunch of ills. Anyways, you know where we are. Get on FLW. Figure it out. Come hang out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll have the SMC booth. Lots of cool stuff. Two to six. We'll all be hanging out. Obviously, we're going to be on the water some, too. Come by, hang out. Guys, thank you for uh, yeah. hanging out. Awesome time. Hour, hour done. Hour done. Hope you enjoyed it. We're gone. We're gone. We'll see you. Yeah! yeah.